Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, Dr. G. How are we all doing today? Good. Good. All right, let's get right down to business. As we all know, we have a big macroeconomics exam next week. But don't panic, don't panic. We got all class today to study for it. Now, let's get started right away. Our first area of business is what potential GDP is. Now, who know who can give me a good definition? Yes, Matt. Uh, potential GDP is the value of real GDP when all the economy factors of production, uh, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur are fully employed. Yes, yes. Did everybody hear that? Potential GDP is when real GDP <laughs> is real GDP when the factors of production are fully employed. Now, when we're talking about the factors of production, what are we uh, referring to here? Anybody know? Anybody know? Yes, Kyle. The four factors of production are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Yes, yes, very good, very good. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Right on, Kyle. Now, uh, when talking from an income standpoint and looking at the four factors of production, how is the income distributed? Yes, Matt. Uh, well, land would be rent, labor would be wages, capital would be interest, and entrepreneurship would be profit or loss. Very good. Very good. Everybody hear that? Any questions on any of this stuff? Nope. Are we good? All right, let's move on. Our next area of, of business is uh, the production function. Now, who knows what the production function is? Yes, yeah, Scott. The production function is a relationship that shows the maximum quantity of real GDP that can be produced as the quantity of labor employed changes and all their influence on the production remain the same. Awesome. Great definition. When we refer to production function, we're referring to the relationship that shows the maximum quantity of the real GDP. All right? Now, when looking at this graph of the real GDP, what points would be attainable and what would be unattainable? Anybody know? Anybody know? Yes, Nate? Well, Dr. D, point D would actually be unattainable, and point E would be attainable. Excellent. Excellent. Now, who knows why uh, point D would be unattainable while point E is attainable? Yes, Scott? Well, according to the production function line on the graph, anything underneath the line is attainable due to having adequate factors of production in the economy and anything above the line is unattainable due to having inadequate resources. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Did everybody hear that? Okay. Do we have any questions on any of this stuff before we move on? Are we good? All right. All right. Moving on. So the next area that we are going to cover is the labor market. Now, who here knows a good definition for what demand of labor is? Anybody? Anybody? No one? Oh, yes, me. Oh, yeah. Um, the relationship between the quantity of labor demanded and the real wage rate when all other influences of firms hiring plans remain the same. Excellent. Excellent. Right on. That's a slam dunk, my man. All right. Moving on. The next part is the quantity of labor demanded. Anybody know? Quantity of labor demanded? All right. Well, the quantity of labor demanded is the total labor hours that all the firms plan to hire during a given time period at a given wage rate. So given time period, given wage rate. Everybody write that down? That'll be on the exam. Okay. Next is the supply of labor. Now, who knows a good definition for the supply of labor? Yes, Matt. Uh, supply of labor is the relationship between quantity of labor supplied and the real wage rate when all other influences of work plans remain the same. Great. Great. Everybody got that? It's word for word. Word for word right there. All right. Now, lastly, is the quantity of labor supply. Now, 
No, who can tell me what the quantity of labor supply is? Yes, Scott. The quantity of labor supply is the number of labor hours that all the households in the economy plan to work during a given time period at a given real wage rate. Um, the, <clears throat> the quantity of labor supply increases as real wage rate increases for two reasons. One of the reasons is when hours per person increase, and the other reason is when the labor force participation increases. Excellent. Excellent. Any questions on this stuff? All right. Then the last area is the labor market equilibrium. For the exam, I'm going to need you guys to know that when I refer to the labor market equilibrium, um, is basically if there is neither a shortage or a surplus, okay, then the labor market will be in equilibrium. All right? Everybody got that? All right. Any question on any of this stuff? All right. Let's move. All right. Moving on. Our last area of business. All right. We're going to have factors related to the national unemployment rate. Now, when we talk about job rationing, what am I referring to? Yes. Nate. A situation that arises when the real wage rate is above the full employment equilibrium, equilibrium level. Awesome. Awesome. You guys get that? All right. Moving on. The la lastly, what are the three types of wages? Matt, take the first one. Uh, the first one is efficiency wage, which means uh, a real wage rate that is set above the full employment equilibrium wage rate to induce greater work and effort. Good. Good. Next, Kyle. The second one is the minimum wage law, and that's the government regulation that makes hiring labor for less than a specified wage legal. Very good, very good. And lastly, the last one, Kyle. And the last one two. is union wage, which is the wage rate that results from collective bargaining between a labor union and a firm. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I think we're ready to go for this exam. What do you guys think? All right, let's do it.